Welcome back to DeFi Tactics. Remember, this is not financial advice. Do not make any financial decisions based on my word alone. Always do your own research. With that said, today we're gonna to discuss Songbird Rewards, the rewards cycle for an epoch, and we're gonna do some speculation on the Flare Network rewards using the same mechanism of the FTSO. Let's get to it. So to start off, we're on the flaremetrics.io site. I wanna show you guys exactly where you can find the reward rates for the signal providers. On the bottom left-hand side, you see the FTSO providers. We're gonna go ahead and click View All, which will bring us to a list of the FTSO providers, signal providers. This page gives us a very good breakdown of some of the information or metrics we can use when deciding which signal provider to delegate our detachable vote to. We can see we can look at vote power, the vote power percentage, the rewards rate per 100 songbird, and the fee that they take. This reward rate and the vote power is currently for Epoch 2, or the second week. You may notice that these reward rates are lower than towards the end of Epoch 1, and we'll get into why that is in a little bit here. If you're wondering how you can check your rewards based on your signal provider performance, on the Flare Metrics site, if we go up to the top and cl click Check Rewards, it'll bring us to this site where we input our Songbird address and we click Check. So going back to why the reward rate is lower than it might have been toward the end of the last week or last epoch, the reward rate resets each epoch as the variables that are used to calculate it have changed. What does this mean? Well, this means that each week the performance of each signal provider may get better or may get worse. The signal provider is not guaranteed a certain amount of rewards. This changes based on the price feed data that they send, whether it's of better quality or lower quality. The better price feeds that they send in, the better rewards that they'll get. And since this can change each and every week, then the reward rate is also going to change each and every week. If you're getting anything out of this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and leave me a comment in the comment section below. One thing I wanna make clear, and this is how we can utilize the power of delegating a detachable vote. If you take no weekly action, the system defaults to the previous week's selected data providers. What does this mean? This means if for this week, we have delegated to two signal providers and we are happy with their performance. We can use those wrapped songbirds in a DAP such as one of the Flare Finance modules in order to earn a second yield stream. Thus, we're using one token to gain two yield streams. This is huge. XRP Crow does an excellent job of creating these infographics in order to help us visualize what's going on here. If we look at the top, we can see that at 8.41 Saturday UTC time, the reward epoch cycle begins. This epoch lasts for one full week till the, net, the following Saturday at 8.40, 08.40 UTC. If we want to delegate our initial votes or change signal providers, then we need to delegate our votes and ensure that they are locked up prior to Thursdays at 1441 UTC. The reason we need to delegate our votes prior to 1441 th on Thursday UTC is because from Thursday 1441 UTC until Saturday 840 UTC, there will be a random block or instant in time when the vote power will be locked. If, for example, we say wait until Saturday at 06 UTC to delegate, the time or the snapshot of the lock of the voting power may have already passed. It could have occurred, let's say, at Friday 08. If this happens, then either our initial delegation or our new delegation will have to wait until the next reward cycle or the next voting power locking cycle. One final thing I want to hit up before we start playing with some numbers to understand the true power of this delegation system is this Medium article. Scrolling down a little bit, we can see the highlighted section that in the FTSO, the price is determined based on the value submitted by FLR, Spark Token, 
and F asset token holders. FLR and F asset token holders can delegate their voting powers to other price providers using wrapped FLR delegation feature. What does this mean? This means that as a Spark token holder or an FLR token holder, you have a detachable vote similar to Songbird. Additionally, if you mint an F asset such as FXRP, F Litecoin, those F assets will also have a detachable vote that we can then delegate to a signal provider. Thus, just by minting F assets, we can add to the amount of delegations that we have to a signal provider, therefore increasing our rewards. Now it's time to play with some numbers and play with some math. And this is where it gets real fun because we can learn the power of this new system. So this is just a little spreadsheet I made uh, to kind of give us a comparison between the Songbird network and the data we've already received from the Songbird network and use that to speculate on when the Flare network launches. However, even though I'm just speculating, guesstimating, whatever you want to call it, these numbers are very promising for us to start participating early. We've got the Songbird total supply is 15 billion with an annual inflation of 10%. Thus, annually, there will be a 2.25 billion token increase per year. This can be increased or decreased by governance in the future. On the right hand side of the screen, we've got the Spark token information with 100 billion total tokens, an annual inflation rate of 10%. Thus, each year there would be an additional 10 billion tokens delivered through the FTSO reward system. Here's where the fun starts and here's where we start making some comparisons. The Spark FTSO rewards will be approximately 4.444 times larger than the Songbird STSO rewards. How do we get that? We get that by dividing the annual inflation of the Spark token by the annual inflation of the Songbird token. This means that each year there will be approximately 4.444 times more Spark token being delivered through the reward system by the FTSO than the Songbird network. The next bit of information we have to work with is information from the first epoch of Songbird. We can see the Songbird rewards rate for epoch one was anywhere from 0.6 to 3.1 Songbird per 100 Songbird delegated for one week. Thus, we have an assumed average return of 2.1 Songbird per 100 Songbird delegated. If we use those figures from that first week, we can guesstimate that there will be a Spark rewards rate of anywhere from 2.66 Spark to 13.77 Spark per 100 Spark delegated. Using our assumed average return from the first epoch in the Songbird network, that would give us a 9.3324 Spark per 100 Spark delegated assumed average return. Breaking it down a little farther, because there's 10 billion tokens being distributed annually through the FTSO on the Flare network, compared to the 2.25 billion tokens being rewarded on the Songbird network, we can deduce that the amount of rewards that we'll get from the FTSO on the Flare network will be in the neighborhood of four and a half times larger than the Songbird network. Now here's where the numbers get fun. If we have 100 Spark tokens, weekly earnings based on our assumed average return of about 9.33 Spark tokens. This will give us a yearly earning of about 485 Spark tokens. Now let's introduce the multiplier effect. Let's go up to 1,000. Well, if we have 1,000 Spark tokens, that brings us up to weekly income of about 93 Spark tokens. Yearly, that puts us at about 4,000 852 Spark tokens. Bumping it up further, 10,000 puts us at about 933 per week and about 48,528 Spark per year. Jumping down to 20,000 Spark held and delegated to the FTSO, we have a weekly earnings at about 1,866 Spark tokens. That bumps us up to about 97,056 Spark tokens annually. Right now, the Spark token IOU on Bitru is trading anywhere from about 90 cents to $1.
you can see if we're earning 97,000 Spark annually, how powerful this system is and how we can use this to earn passive income and earn financial freedom. With that said, I wanna highlight a couple of assumptions that I am making with this. One, that the FTSO participation in the Flare network will be similar to the STSO in the Songbird network. When the Flare network drops, there may be a larger participation rate than there is in the Songbird network now. However, we do know that getting in early is the best way to earn the most rewards. This is also based on an average rewards rate of 2.1 per 100 Songbird delegated weekly. Additionally, those votes delegated may be either Spark token or F asset votes. So you may be saying, oh man, do I have to go buy 50,000 Spark IOUs right now if I didn't get in on the XRP snapshot? That's not necessarily the case because if you end up minting FXRP, FXLM, any F asset, those come with a detachable vote. You can then use that detachable vote to delegate to a signal provider. One last thing I wanna add, and this is probably the best part of this whole thing. These numbers are assuming that we are not adding in these weekly rewards into our delegation votes, meaning that these reward rates are not being compounded. If we're earning weekly rewards, we can take those rewards and delegate those votes to compound our earnings. If we start adding in our weekly rewards, then we start compounding our interest and our returns, and then these numbers become a lot higher. So that about wraps it up for this video. Again, I just wanted to give you an overview of the Songbird rewards and do a little guesstimation speculation on what we know from the Songbird rewards and how we can use that to estimate or guesstimate our expected Flare network rewards. As always, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. We'll catch you next time on DeFi Tactics.